So let's use a do while loop. And if you remember from a previous chapter, the do while loop will always be carried out at least once. And then we'll carry on as many times as the condition in the while statement at the end is true. Now, this looks like it should work, but actually we need to do something to that condition. The open function will return true if the working file handle is successfully created. And unfortunately, in this case, this means that a true value will mean that we execute the loop again. And we'll only get down to this part once we enter some gook rather than a proper file name. So it's kind of doing the exact reverse of what we want it to do. It's always very easy to turn this around if we've got exactly the reverse of the effect that we want. We can just include a not operator at the beginning of the condition. That reverses true to false and false to true whatever the open function gives back as its return value. Let's see how that works now in the command line. When we try that out, we've got an error there. And if I move back to my script, I think I'm pretty sure I know what I've done. Left out the semicolon at the end of that while line. We move back to our command line and run the script again. And we type in some nonsense. This time it's going to prompt us again. And again, and again, and again, until we give it a valid file name, at which point it carries out the read and returns the information to the command line. What we're not doing here is we're not telling the user what went wrong. We're just asking them for the file again. And that could be a little confusing. So what we need is a way of putting the error message that we initially put right down the bottom here, we actually need to include it before this line is printed and the user is prompted for input. We can do that by including the error message up here. There's definitely something wrong with this though. If we go back to our command line, the first thing we get is the error message. That's not what we want. So we need a way of checking to make sure that if we're in the loop for the second time, then we need to print the error message. If we're in it for the first time, then we need to simply print the which file line and prompt the user for the input. We can do this by adding another if statement up here. And we're going to use the define function. Define function tests a certain variable to see whether it's been declared yet. In this case, file name. So if file name has been defined as anything at all, then we can safely say that we're not in the block for the first time, in which case we need to print out the error message. Let's go back to our command line and try it out. The first time, that block executes, we're simply prompted for the file name. We type in a line of rubbish, and we're told that the file name is invalid, and we're returned to the prompt again. So our script is looking a little more functional. There are still some more things we can do to it to make it even better. We're going to look at those in the next movie.